Hey, what is going on everybody? In this video, what I'd like to do is show you guys how you can use the number picker view in Android Studio. By the end of the video, we should have something that looks like this. It's a pretty sweet way to grab user input. And if you guys do stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna show you guys how you can replace the numbers in the number picker with string values. It's pretty simple to do and it'll make your apps look a lot better. So let's get started. All right, so I have a new project loaded up and to start these videos off, the first thing I normally do is come over to the palette and then I'll drag in the view that we're gonna be working with. But if you take a look throughout the entire palette, you probably won't be able to find the number picker. I know I couldn't find it anywhere in here. So what we're gonna do is open up the split view so we can see the XML associated with our design. And I'm gonna replace this text view here with a number picker. So I'm gonna type in number picker, and then once Android Studio finds out what we're trying to add in, I'm gonna hit enter, and it should fill in a few things for us. The layout width and height. I'm gonna give this a layout width of wrap content and a layout height of wrap content as well. And then we're gonna close this tag off and come over to our design and give our number picker a few constraints. So I'm gonna click on the view, give it a right and left constraint, and then give it a bottom and top constraint so it's centered right on our screen. Now that we have the number picker on the screen, I'm also gonna drag in a text view so we can see what the user has selected. So I'm just gonna give this some constraints to the left and right and the top. I'm gonna to drag this down just a little bit so it's not flush with the top of our layout. And then if we come back over, I'm gonna add in a few attributes to our text view. I'm gonna give it a text size of 26 SP, and then let's make the text color blue. So I'm gonna type in Android text color, then we're gonna go hashtag 0000FF for blue. So now that we have all of our views in here, we need to do one more thing to our number picker and that's giving it an ID. So to do this, all you have to do is type in Android ID and then within here type in at plus ID forward slash whatever ID you wanna give your number picker. I'm just gonna call it number picker to keep things a little bit simpler. And then this should be everything we need in our XML file. So let's navigate over to our mainactivity.java file and we can actually start writing some code to work with our number picker. So once we have our mainactivity.java file loaded up, let's actually grab the instances of those two views that we set up in our XML file. So we set up a text view. I'm just gonna call it text view. And we also set up a number picker. So number picker, and then I'm just gonna call it number picker. And then within our onCreate, what we have to do is actually assign values to those two variables that we just created. So we can do this by typing in text view, set that equal to a find view by ID, and then type in r.id. whatever ID you happen to have for your text view. In my case, it's just text view. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the number picker. So number picker, set that equal to a find view by ID, r.id, and if you remember, we gave it an ID of number picker. So now that we have our two views linked up to their correct variables in our Java code, if we were to actually run our app, the user really wouldn't be able to do anything. They'd be able to see our number picker right here. But if we click in here, all we get is the zero with the two bars above it, and the user can't interact with this view at all. To make it so the user can actually pick from a list of numbers, what we have to do is add in a min and max value for our number picker. To do this, all you have to do is type in number picker dot set min value, and I'm gonna give it a value of zero. And then let's set our max value, so number picker dot set max value to a value of 10. So now if you save and run this, you can see we actually have a list of numbers to choose from. The user can pick a number from zero all the way up to 10. This is pretty sweet and all. We have an awesome UI for picking numbers, but how do we actually work with the number picker in our code? You know, so if the user selects the number four, how do we know that? So to show you guys how to do this, what I'd like to do is create an on change listener for our number picker. So to create this listener, all we have to do is type in number picker dot set on value change listener. We're gonna create a new number picker dot on changed value listener and Android Studio should create this method right here for you. What this method is gonna do is run anytime the user changes the current state or value that's currently selected in the number picker. To show you guys the effect that this listener has, we're gonna change the text in our text view based upon what the user has selected in the number picker. So to do this, we're gonna type in text view dot set text and we're gonna do a string dot format and within the string I'm just gonna type in users number colon mod s and then we're gonna pass in the new value so where did this new value come in if you take a look at the on value change method here we have the number picker 
the old value and the new value. The old value is going to store the old value that was previously selected, and the new value is going to store the current value that the user has selected. So we want to change the text of our text view to whatever number the user currently has selected. So if we run our app now, and we start changing some values in our number picker, you can see the text view is updated with the current number that the user has selected. Now, if you did notice when I first opened up this app, the text view wasn't displaying anything. To populate the text view with a string value when the activity is first loaded up, we could type in text view dot set text. And again, we're gonna do the string dot format, type in our user's number, colon mod s, and this time we're gonna pass in the number picker dot get value. And all this is doing is getting the current value that the user has selected. And we're just gonna, again, assign this string to our text view. So now if we run our app, you'll notice that we have user number is zero. And now if we start changing things, the text view will change accordingly. So if you only wanted to work with numbers with our number picker, that is pretty much everything you need to know. This little bit right here will grab the current value that the user has stored. So if you have some button that's gonna load up a new activity, you can grab the value that the user has stored in there, bundle that up in your intent and load up your new activity, or you can work with the on value change listener. Now, for those of you that wanna use string values in the number picker, what we're gonna do is come over to the far left Come down to your resources folder, open up the values and double click on your strings.xml file. And then within here, what we're going to do is define a string array. I already created one prior to this video. You guys can populate this string array with whatever you want. But once you have this string array defined and you have a name for it, come back over to the mainactivity.java file and we're going to do a few more things. I'm going to come outside of the onCreate method and let's define a string array. I'm just going to call it places. And then within our onCreate method, let's actually grab the values from our string array in our strings resource file. So we could do that by typing in places, setting that equal to a get resources dot get string array. And then we're just going to go r dot array dot whatever you named your string array. I called mine locations. So what this is doing is coming into our strings resource file, grabbing this array and storing each of those values in our places variable for our Java code. So now that we have all the strings that we defined in our string resource file, what we need to do is tell our number picker to use those strings rather than numbers. So to do this, all we have to do is type in number picker dot set displayed values to our places. And if we come back over to the strings resource file, you'll notice I only have seven items in the string array. So I need to change this 10 to a six. And then what I'm gonna do is modify our format string here. I'm gonna change number to location. And I'm gonna do the same thing for our on value change listener here as well. And what we need to do is change the new value to places. And then within brackets, we're gonna pass in the new value to grab the string stored in our string array. Oh, and this part is wrong. This should be places and in brackets here. So we're not grabbing the number, we're grabbing the place associated with that index. So now if we run our app, you'll see we have the user's location is the United States, or they can go through, select so Poland, Philippines, India, wherever the user happens to be. So that's how you add strings into your number picker, but there is one more thing that I'd like to show you guys, and that's setting the string that's selected by default. So if you notice, when we first loaded up the app, we had United States loaded up. But let's say we wanted Germany to be selected when the activity is first loaded. So this is an index of zero, one, two. So if we come over to the main activity, past our set max value method, all we have to do is type in number picker dot set value to an index of two. And then if we run our app again, you'll see our user's location is Germany instead of a default of United States. All right, so I think that's it for the number picker. I went over a lot of the basics of working with this view. As always, if you guys have any questions about anything that happened in this video, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.